doing great and fine. Are you ready for today's classes? Awesome, and are you happy to be here? Awesome kids, so today we will be uh, looking at the story of Balaam's life, okay? But before we continue, we have to do something. Can you tell me what is it? Yes, we have to pray. So let's, uh, let us all do the actions with me. Open, close, open, close. Let us join our little hands, let us close our little eyes, and let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be here. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for my family, friends, and everyone around me. I ask you to help me learn more about you and put it into practice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And I have it. Okay, kids. So now, are you ready to learn today's theme? Awesome kids. So the theme is, God knows your intentions. Repeat after me. God knows your intentions. Now, the little girls, repeat after me. God knows your intentions. Now the little boys, repeat after me. God knows your intentions. Now let us all say it all together so that everyone can hear us around you, okay? God knows your intentions. Okay, kids, I hope that you learned the team for today. Now let us do a little game so that we can review and see if you all did pay attention to the team, okay? So I have these three uh, little papers with different colors. When I show this color, you will jump. When I show this color, you will spin. And when I show this color, you will uh, sit down, okay? Ready? Let us begin. This is to jump, this is to spin, and this is to sit down. So pay close attention, and when I show it, you have to do the action, okay? Ready? Okay, kids. Now, this one. This one. Now, the three of Awesome, kids. Let's do it again and see who gets confused. The one who gets confused will have to save the team, okay? After someone got confused, so let us save the team. God knows your intentions. Okay, one more time, let us do the game. Awesome kids, so let us uh, say the team one more time so that it can stay here, okay? So it says, God knows your intentions. Awesome kids, I hope that you all enjoyed the little game and that you all participated. So now, are you ready for the next part of Yes? Okay, so I hope that you're all ready and to pay attention and to learn the memory verse. It's super short and super easy. And I know that you're all little smart kids. So let us pay attention and let us learn our memory verse. Hi friends, thank you for being here. I'm so excited that we get to talk about today's memory verse. It's so important to know the Bible, so I want to say it first, and I'll say it a couple of times, okay? Here it is. Are you ready? I can't hear you. Are you ready? Great. It is, the Lord knows exactly why you are doing it. Proverbs 21, 2. I'll say it again, okay? The Lord knows exactly why you're doing it. It's in Proverbs 21, 2. Can you say it with me? You can? Okay, I'll say part and then you repeat. Are you ready? 
the Lord knows exactly why you are doing it. So Proverbs 21, 2. Let's do it again, okay? The Lord knows exactly why you are doing it. Proverbs 21, 2. That's great. I think we can say it with some voices, okay? I want you to say it with a really deep voice. Can you do that? A really deep voice. Okay. Let's go. The Lord. I can't hear you. The Lord. That's great. Knows exactly why you are doing it. Proverbs 21, 2. That was awesome. All right, let's say it with a really squeaky voice like this, okay? Okay, that hurts my ears. The Lord knows exactly why you are doing it. Proverbs 21, two. Last time, this time, like a robot, okay? See if you can repeat after me. The Lord knows exactly why you are doing it. Proverbs 21, two. Thank you so much, friends. Let's say it all together as loud as we can, okay? I'm gonna scream, you're gonna scream, it's gonna be great. Are you ready? Okay, the Lord knows why you are doing it. Proverbs 21, two. Thank you so much, boys and girls. The Lord knows exactly why you are doing it. Proverbs 21, two. Let's play a game to remember today's memory verse. Do you remember? It's the Lord knows exactly why you are doing it. Proverbs 21, two. I have some friends that are gonna help us. They're going to stack these cups on top of my paper, like this, if I can do it, I practiced earlier. And hopefully, they'll be able to pull this string all the way to the bottom. And the last person that does it has to say the memory verse. Are you ready to meet my friends? I can't hear you. Friends, come on up. Who do we have today? We have Benji. And a uh, beer. Do you know the rules? You have to stack the stack the cup tower here. Pull the pull the paper. Grip the string all the way to the end. The last person that does it gets to say the memory verse. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's start. Let's see. Let's start moving out here. Wow, they're going. Who do you think's gonna win? Here. Benji? Oh, it's close. It's cl it, is it gonna fall? What do you think, boys and girls? Definitely. Waiting to see. Waiting to see. Come on, let's cheer them on, boys and girls. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Benji, can you say the memory verse with me? All right, you repeat after me, okay? The Lord, Lord knows, knows why, why you, you are doing it. Are doing it. Proverbs, Proverbs 21, 21, 2. Two. Great, thank you. Thank you, boys and girls. Grab your stuff at home and you can play the game now. Okay, kids, so I hope that you all learned the memory verse. It was super sharp and easy, right? Awesome, so don't forget to uh, call or send us your videos saying your memory verse. Now, the high part of the classes has arrived. So let us all stand up, stretch your little hands, stretch your little legs, and tell your little friends, give them some space because I will dance for you. <laughs> Sunshine, he's the one who puts
puts the moon in the sky He's the one who hung the star
maybe a little. So now it is time for all of us to sit down and to pay close attention to the story. So kids, today we will be talking about the life of Bela. Yes kids, and do you know something? He once talked to a donkey. Yes kids, I know that it sounds really funny, but yes, he did talk to a donkey. And so, do you wanna know what happened after that? Yes? Awesome, so let us all pay close attention to what the story has for us and to see what happened when Balaam talked to the donkey. So let us all pay close attention, tell your little friends, I want to pay close attention and see what God has for me. Okay, so let us go with the lesson. The people of Israel come in the lands of Moab. The king of Moab saw all that the children of Israel had done to the Amorites and was greatly afraid of Israel. The Israelites are going to destroy us just like the car destroys all the cars in the field. I need to send the car for them. I need them to curse them because that they're in our territory and they're much more powerful. The king asked his chiefs to call Balaam because he knew that when Balaam blesses someone, it goes well for him. And when he curses someone, it goes badly for him. So he sent his bosses with a lot of gold to convince Balaam to do it. King Balak sent me to tell you to curse that we will be much more powerful than Moab. If you curse them, Moab will be able to defeat them and expel them from the territory. Stay here tonight. Tomorrow I will tell you what God wants me to do. So the heads of Moab stayed that night in Balaam's house. While Balaam was praying, the Lord asked him, Who are those men who are in your house? Balaam answered, God, those men want me to curse the people of Israel. Then God answers Balaam, saying, Do not go with those men, nor put a curse on those people, because I will make everything go well for them. The next day, Balaam told the men what God wanted him to do. So, Balaam asked them to return to their town because God has not allowed him to go to Moab. The chiefs returned to the king Balak. My king, we have commanded, we have done as he commanded, we have spoken with Balaam and we told him to curse the people. Nevertheless, he did not come. What? So the most important chiefs, tell me not to work out, but tell Balaam to come immediately. Here, then let's go. The most important chiefs go to Balaam's house and give him the king's message. The king sent for you once more. He says, come immediately. Destroy the town. I'll pay you many, many gold if, if you want. I'll make you important. Even if your king gives me all the gold of his kingdom, I cannot disobey the God of Israel. Stay here tonight and we'll see what God has me to do. That night, Balaam began to pray to God, and God told him, If those men want you to go with them, go but you will only do what I tell you. And he said, okay, God. On the next day, Balaam saddled his donkey and went with the chiefs to Moab. And God was very angry that Balaam went with them because he knew the intention of his heart. Then God sent an angel to appear on his way. While he was riding his donkey, the angel appeared to him with a sword but Balaam could not see him. The donkey stopped and Balaam got angry and hit him. The angel moved and went into a narrow street next to a wall. The donkey went back. Balaam yelled at the donkey and hit it to make it move. The angel came closer against the rock wall and the donkey crushed Balaam's foot. Whereupon Balaam once more struck the donkey. In that, the angel came so close that the donkey could not move anymore and just fell to the ground. At this, 
Balaam got angry and continued to beat the donkey. God saw it and made the donkey speak. Imagine attacking donkey. The donkey said, what have I done to you? Why did you hit me three times? If I had a sword, I would kill you right now. I am your donkey. All my life I have taken you everywhere and I have never treated you badly like you did with me today. You're right. At that moment, God allowed Balaam to see the angel with the sword. At this, Balaam knelt down and the angel said to him, why have you hit your donkey three times? I was the one who blocked your way. If your donkey hadn't seen me and backed away, I would have killed you and he would have left here alive. Sorry Lord, I have done you very wrong. If you do not want me to go to Moab, I will return home immediately. The angel told him, go with them, but you will only say what I say. Wow kids, what a great story, right? So we can see that Balaam obeyed what uh, God told him in the first time, right? But in the second time, when those men visit him, visited him again, he was moved by the amount of gold and everything that they were offering him, even though he made it seem like he was not kings. So we can see that he did not do what God commanded him to do. He wanted to do his own will, kids. So we can, just as Balaam's life, we can see that if we are coming to the classes just because of the snobs, the tickets, or any other thing that we like from the classes, we are doing the things wrong. Because obedience is the most important thing that God likes about us. Okay kids, so let us repeat with me. God, help me to obey you. No matter how beautiful the things the world offers me looks like. Again, God, help me to obey you. No matter how beautiful the things the world offers me looks like. Again kids, God, help me to obey you no matter how beautiful the things the world offers me looks like okay kids so i hope that you all learned the memory verse the team for today or anything from the lesson don't forget to uh, call us or send us a video uh with any of those things that you learned so this is today's crop it is a little um donkey so teachers you can do it from bristol board uh do the little ears do the little hair and uh let, leave it um unpainted so that the kids can paint it and then afterwards you can the kids can use it for a book decoration or anything that they wanted uh the a video will be posted so that you can see the steps and how the arts is made okay Okay kids, so I will show you the steps on how to make the donkey. So the color, well, it's just for me to show you, okay, it doesn't matter. You can use a white ones and then you can paint it in gray. Or you can use a gray um, color sheet also if you can get, but it doesn't matter, okay. It's just for you to see how um, you can do it. So you, what you need, it will be a square. This is not a square, but we will take out our square from this. So this is the way how I do it. I fold it like this and I form a triangle. A triangle and then I will cut the rest of it. I will cut this one like this. And then whenever we have our uh, square ready, we'll leave this like this and we will bring down this one here, this side, right here in the middle, like this. And we will do the same with the other one. 
bring it down in the middle like this now we will open it we have our marks here and this one we will bring down one of this over here in the middle also this will stay here and we'll uh, put up this here again just the way how we fold it but this time um, this little piece that is left over here we will bend it inside okay this will go inside this will be going inside and the same you will do with the other piece okay same uh, one that you fold you will bring it here and you will pull, uh, push it inside okay and you will have something like this now for the hair i draw the hair and i just cut it out um, from the bristol board this will go here and the same things go for the ear you already saw the picture right that the um, person show you and this is how you put it and the teeth also i um made this on the i draw this on the on the bristol board and i cut it so now let us all pray so that we can be this with thank you jesus for allowing us to be here thank you for reminding us that obedience is the, the most important thing that you like from us help us to put everything into practice <clears throat> in our lives. Thank you for all the blessings and thank you for allowing us to learn more about you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So bye kids, see you next week.